And for boat, we're going to turn around and face the wall. And you'll have your knees bent. You can have your toes on the wall or near the wall where you want to be close enough that your feet do reach the wall. You're sitting right on your sits bones, the little bony protuberances all the way at the bottom of your pelvis. Sometimes they're hard to feel. Go ahead and move any flesh you need to move out of the way so you can get a better sense of sitting right on those sits bones. Hopefully you'll be able to feel them. Squirm around, feel that you're on the sits bones. Allow your back to be tall, and then we lean back a little bit. And you notice I'm holding onto my legs for support. Lean back just enough so now you're moving just behind your sits bones. That's really important for our boat pose. Then take your hands, put them behind you. Your fingertips can face you. They can face out to the side. Whatever position of the hands is comfortable for your shoulders. So this is our, actually our first version of boat. I like to call this grounded boat or boat in dry dock. You can choose. Those are not official yoga names. That's what I call it. Here, focus on not putting so much weight into your hands, but putting the weight into the V at the bottom of your boat, which is your sits bones, or just behind your sits bones. And we can take our, our grounded boat or our dry dock boat, maybe keep it in, in dock, but lift the anchor by taking the feet on the wall. And you'll see I, I slid my bottom a little closer to the wall. I realized I wasn't quite close enough. So feet on the wall. You're in this V shape with this part of your body your, where your thighs meet your pelvis or where your legs plug into your torso. Breathe. This, this, even though we're supported with our hands and our feet, <laughs> believe me, it requires a lot of strength. I can feel my parts working. We didn't do a lot of work here for the hip flexors. I can feel the hip flexors working at the front part of the hips. So if this is plenty of work for you, and it may well be, you can stay right here. And this is a wonderful place to practice boat pose. You can build up strength. You can build balance. I'm going to show you a few other variations if you want to play with that. And that's what I call this, playing with boat pose, playing with balance in boat pose. So one thing you can do is use the support of your hands, but rather than have them supported on the floor, take them behind your thighs, continuing to lean back. So I'll tell you what I felt when I did that. You might feel something very different. I felt the stretch move more toward my hip flexors. They are really working a lot now. You can place your hands back at any time, anytime you need to, anytime you want to come and rest, come to a seated position. You can lie down. It's your practice. Take a rest if that's what works for you. So from the support of the feet on the wall and the hands on the floor, you also have the option of coming down to forearms. Now that took the work a little bit higher into my abdominal area. Here though, I have more ease of being able to play with a straight leg version of this lower boat that probably looks more like a canoe. But again, now my arms are working a lot to hold me up. There's something working. Even though these are variations, we're trying to find a version of the pose that works for you. That doesn't mean it's necessarily going to be some kind of easy version of boat pose. Help yourself up. I'm going to rest here for a second, and then I'll show you a few other variations as we finish out this practice. By no means you have to practice every variation. When I give you variations, they're not levels, they're not hard to easy, they're try this, see how it feels in your body. If you like it, stick with it. All right, I'm gonna go to the hands down, feet on the ground. So with the hands down version, we did straight legs on our forearms. We can try straight legs with our hands down. Or you can try one leg straight, one leg bent. And I like to then play around with reaching the opposite arm. So now I get a little more balance by taking one of my arms off the ground. Maybe with this foot on the wall, I can even float that leg away from the wall, though it's a lot more work in the front part of my leg now. And then I'll relax and come down. 
If you do try one variation on one side, you might want to try it on the other side too. It's not absolutely necessary that we do the same thing on both sides. Our bodies are different, so maybe something is more accessible to you on one side that's not on the other side. That's okay. And then as we finish, I'm just going to show you a couple versions of releasing the hands, releasing the legs, if you want to play with that today or some other day, starting with, and I build it up from being completely grounded and dry docked to maybe raising my anchor, but still being docked, still, you know, having the security of the dock there. And then maybe I bend my elbows a little bit more and see if I can, like, this can be bent or straight, and I actually usually like that both legs bend because my hip flexors can get overworked, so I like to keep them bent. And either with the feet on the wall or away, again, you can play around with lifting one arm, try the other, maybe you reach one arm, one leg, try the other, Sometimes they even like to do a nice little twist in this position. And then last thing, if you feel like you can keep the front body activated just as you did in a twist, you can reach both arms away. And I'm going to keep it right here at the bent leg version. I'm not even going to go to straight legs. This is bringing a lot of balance into it. Again, a lot of tough work for the hip flexors. So much going on in this pose. Whatever pose you've chosen, maybe it's this version. And oh, that leaves, lets me hang on to it for a few more breaths here. Ah, and then you exhale. See if you can continue to be in the pose as you come out of the pose. So slowly come out rather than collapsing out. That does take a little bit more work and effort, but it can be a great mindful part of the practice.